Welcome everyone, it's really nice to be here in Denmark. Um, my name is Daniel Homfi, uh, work uh, in Sweden at uh, the Technical Research Institute uh, of Sweden, called SP. And uh, this uh, contribution is prepared uh, together with my colleague uh, David Lang, uh, who also works at SP. And uh, this presentation will be a bit less scientific than the previous one. It will uh, be more speculative, I would say. And it's simply because uh, I hope it works. Simply because um, a lot of things are based on, uh, on a, a recent project where we just uh, signed a grant agreement with the European Union. So a lot of things are based on uh, what we would like to do and uh, the uh, description of the, or the pro taken from the proposal. So there's a lot of potential uh, in this, I would say. And uh, we talk a little bit about critical infrastructure. What is that? And uh, how, uh, why uh, structural health monitoring is important there. And they talk about uh, the resilience uh, concepts, which I know that a lot of people don't like uh, this word. And the... Uh, um, a lot of people here worked with uh, structural robustness, and I uh, would also like to uh, to see how these uh, things, robustness and resilience, uh, relate to each other. And then uh, we, I will talk about uh, how structural health monitoring can improve uh, the resilience of critical infrastructure. It's just I cannot see the slides. Okay. So uh, the definition of uh, critical infrastructure is that uh, these are assets that are uh, essential uh, for uh, uh, maintaining uh, vital social functions for health, safety, security, economic well-being, and so on. This could include uh, water distribution systems, uh, energy distribution systems, transportation systems, communication systems, or whatever. Uh, and the disruption, disruption of uh, critical infrastructure would, of course, cause a, a significant impact uh, on these functions. So these systems are usually very complex, and uh, they are exposed to uh, various type of hazards. And uh, uh, the consequences of failure are, as I said, are very, uh, uh, could be very severe. And uh, in the top of it, they are quite often interconnected. Uh, I can show you an example here. Okay. Yeah. A bit like this. Oh. So this is the Urizen Bridge. Well, this will be a living lab in our project. We will uh, analyze this bridge from uh, several aspects among other critical infrastructure. And uh, yeah, this is very close to here, Copenhagen. Perhaps many of you, or not so many, but at least those who came from Sweden probably crossed this uh, bridge. This is not, not only a bridge, of course. This is a transportation link, which uh, has a function for uh, railway and uh, highway as well, but also uh, just recently learned that it carries uh, uh, tele telecommunication cables to, uh, uh, to, uh, from the mainland to Scandinavia. So if something happens, it's not just like uh, you cannot uh, uh, cross the horizon uh, sound, but uh, there could be telecommunication problems in Finland, uh, for example. And this consists a bridge, but also a tunnel. So. It's so a very, very, very complex system. And the, the airport in Copenhagen is very close to the bridge, which is the, the sixth six, uh, largest uh, uh, transportation hub in Europe, as I know, as far as I know. Uh, 
So you cannot really look at the bridge as an individual asset. You always have to look at the, the, the context. But th there are several examples like this. And here is an illustration from a paper. Uh, I will have a lot of uh, references in this talk, uh, the pictures taken from, uh, from the literature, how other people uh, consider these issues. Um, still, I cannot see this uh, here. So as you can see here, there are engineering components like the bridge itself or the tunnel uh, or the road uh, in the horizon case, for example. There are natural components. We can see that the hazards, for example, are natural components of this uh, uh, more broader system. Organizational components. You can think about the authorities involved in an emergency situation, for example, and that could be uh, considered at different levels, local uh, level, uh, regional level. Uh, here, it's even two countries uh, uh, would be affected in the horizon case, or uh, national or international level. And uh, the operational level could mean the different uh, the stakeholders, like infrastructure owners, or law enforcement unit, fire departments, and so on, uh, in a case of a major disaster, for example. Mm. Yep. And uh, why am I talking about resilience? So why are we going to look at resilience in our projects? It's simply because uh, policies uh, tends to shift to resilience rather than protection of this critical infrastructure. Simply because of safety of these assets, of course, cannot be ensured by all means. It will be uh, too expensive. So what? critical infrastructure resilient means. It uh, means the ability of the system, of the critical infrastructure, to mitigate hazards, contain the effects of disasters, and uh, also includes uh, recovery after uh, uh, major incidents. And then how to reallocate resources. So all these questions should be addressed somehow. And uh, actually, we have another project uh, at SP, or we're leading coordinating another project which looks at the cascading effects uh, of critical infrastructure in uh, emergency situations. Uh, so to, oops. I have some problems. I see different things on the, Screen. Yeah, it's stuck. Oh, no, it's good. Yeah. So this was the. This is a picture from my colleague David. Uh, he he went to this green and uh, and uh, and yellow uh, patches, which I will try to explain. Uh, we had a lot of discussions. It was quite hard to understand uh, for us, his colleagues, what he's uh, talking about. So I hope that I can, uh, I can give you a brief uh, overview about it. That uh, the left-hand side shows the normal function of a system, and everything is good. Then you have a, a constant performance of the system, uh, the normal capacity, and the min minimum capacity. Uh, we think that is. Uh, the baseline criteria comes from, from the community or the society, so to say. And the, in the case of a major incident, then uh, you will uh, lose functionality. And then this, diffic uh, this uh, various system contributing to the resilience of the, the, the community and the, the, to the critical infrastructure within the community, they will somehow uh, patch together to provide uh, uh, an overall resilience. But then you will have some overlaps in the systems. And uh, to be efficient, it's, it is important to remove these overlaps. But in order to do that, you have to have methods to evaluate uh, different concepts. And different organizations or different uh, uh, 
asset managers or designers, they, they use different methods, which sometimes are not compatible. So, so we would like to, to look at these issues. And of course, structural health monitoring could be see, seen as one element contributing to the resilience of the critical infrastructure. So, some general concepts uh, are given in the literature. This uh, term resilience or the resilience concepts uh, originate uh, from ecological uh, scientists. And then uh, you could define engineering resilience and ecological resilience. And there are uh, quite significant differences. The first one, or uh, engineering resilience uh, has a focus on returning to the equilibrium state of a system, and it could be uh, characterized by stability, efficiency, constancy, and predictability. And uh, the main purpose is to, to provide a controlled, fail-safe uh, performance and optimized performance. On the other uh, hand, ecological resilience uh, reflects to uh, to a dynamic environment when you might uh, somehow balance at the edge of uh, the uh, equilibrium and then your system could uh, flip to other equilibrium states. Then uh, this uh, is more about adaptation to a changing environment. And then if you look at uh, critical infrastructures, simply because they are They are uh, consisting not only the physical asset, but uh, uh, some other elements which, could, uh, which uh, involves humans. Then uh, you should somehow find a balance between these two uh, concepts. Otherwise, you can, uh, uh, your structure could be uh, vulnerable to uh, unforeseen events, for example. Uh, so this is, uh, this is important to uh, look at uh, both aspects here. Uh, here uh, you see a framework uh, developed by the Multidisciplinary Center for Earthquake Engineering Research. So this, uh, this, is, uh, this comes from earthquake engineering. They define different uh, dimensions of uh, resilience. Uh, one is called technical, technological dimensions, dimension, which uh, relates to the physical asset itself and how it can resist damage. There are organizational uh, resilience dimension, which is how to uh, manage uh, the organizations that uh, are responsible for the critical infrastructure. And we also have social and economic uh, dimensions. And you can see in this picture that uh, the social and uh, economical resilience dimensions relate more to the community, whereas the technological and organizational parts are uh, more related to uh, the asset itself. And you see that uh, if you have more uh, critical infrastructures, they are interconnected, and these uh, concepts uh, will then interact. So what they did, they uh, developed this framework, which we also use in our uh, uh, project. And then, based on this, uh, you could uh, define a so-called resilience triangle, uh, which means that uh, in case of an event, you will have a loss of uh, functionality or performance. And then the question is uh, how uh, quickly uh, you can uh, uh, recover and uh, also, uh, how robust is your system to, uh, to tolerate uh, uh, damage? So what they said that uh, the, the strategy is to, to decrease the area of this triangle and, and go back to normal as soon as possible. That uh, uh, then you have two, uh, four attributes of the system, which is called robustness, redundancy, and 
resourcefulness and rapidity. And robustness could be measured in this drawback of the function, how much uh, it uh, drops back in the case of an event. And uh, rapidity uh, reflects to the slope of this uh, uh, recovery curve, so to say. It's, it's a very straightforward and easy concept. But uh, then you can further develop it. Or first I would say that uh, if you look at this triangle, then the, so the I have some problems with this. So the, the robustness is, is on the, the uh, vertical axis and the hori horizontal axis is rapidity. And then uh, how the resourcefulness could be improved, uh, that then you need more dimensions. So the first one shows that if you have, uh, if you then add uh, more uh, resources to your system, then you can improve this uh, resilience and, and decrease the triangle. And the redundancy here reflects uh, to find alternative solutions. In case of the Urizen Bridge, for example, you can take the uh, ferry at uh, Helsingborg if you uh, want to reach Copenhagen from Sweden, for example. And then uh, there are uh, extensions of this uh, uh, concept uh, since uh, we're not only talking about uh, earthquakes when you have a sudden uh, loss of performance, you can have some more smooth curves and uh, you can have uh, uh, aging or degradation, uh, which is uh, shown in the, the second uh, picture. Then, uh, there exist even more uh, advanced concepts of this, with uh, you know, some probabilistic modeling, and uh, looking at uh, different uh, type of uh, failures, uh, F1 means here a brittle failure, F2 a ductile failure, and F3 is a grace, graceful failure, and then a different recovery option uh, you have. Then uh, how does it relate to, uh, how does it relate to um, structure robustness? Then we came up with uh, extension of uh, this structure robustness framework, which is presented here and uh, that will be described in the paper more in detail. So what we are after is how this concept of resilience, which is uh, uh, established uh, by uh, this earthquake engineering community and also uh, uh, looking at uh, urban resilience concept, how can it relate to our structural robustness concept? Uh, which was developed by uh, previous cost action and uh, GCS has adopted it. So we have some ideas. That's, that's not the final version of it, actually. And then uh, that it, it is easy to recognize that uh, uh, structural health monitoring can uh, contribute to uh, improved resilience. Because... Uh, I can skip this slide. So, so, yeah, because the critical infrastructure have, uh, has to be functional during the time of crisis. So, for example, emergency teams should have access to time-sensitive data. And uh, rapid evacuation methods uh, uh, should be uh, uh, established, uh, provided uh, by information from structural health monitoring system. The communication, coordination, in the integration of import, uh, information is uh, uh, very important. And, uh, by looking at this resilience concept, you can see how the different uh, aspects, the robustness, redundancy, and resourcefulness and rapidity could be improved uh, by 
the structural health monitoring at the different stages of uh, uh, disaster management. Uh, before the incident and during the incident and after the incident. So it's not only a maintenance strategy, as uh, Michael also mentioned, this uh, could be valuable information for first responders and should be even coordinated at the higher level, not only the asset managers, but to coordinate uh, uh, the uh, response and recovery actions during and after uh, the uh, incident and also to uh, avoid cascading effects. Val valuable information could be obtained from a very uh, advanced and well-developed uh, structural health monitoring system. Uh, and uh, what other researchers also suggest, that should be integrated with uh, other systems. Of course, then we, have, uh, we will have create uh, problems on how to manage this data. So I think I should round out of time, but we have, there are some scenarios that are investigated in terms of this cri critical uh, resilience triangle, how uh, structural health monitoring can improve uh, the performance of the system. So I think uh, if you want to read more, uh, learn more, then you, you can read our paper. <laughs>